Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joe McLaughlin and I'm the East Renfrewshire Rep on the National Parent Forum of Scotland. Thanks to all of you for coming along to join this morning's session. This is the second part of our fractions, decimal fractions and percentages series. It's great to see so many of you return, hundreds on again this morning, thank you for that. This is the third part of our series. Um, uh, but, uh, the third part, sorry, the third part of our series will be held tomorrow morning. That will be dealing with percentages, and there's another two sessions next week. So please remember to join up using a separate link to join. I'd like to thank Chris, McK Chris McKenna from Count on Us for putting these sessions together for us. These sessions have been really helpful and are available to watch on YouTube after this live broadcast. And a special shout out to Austin, who's, who's with his dad uh, this morning as well. Before I hand over to Chris, I'd like to remind you to join up the National Parent Forum of Scotland newsletter uh, or our social media for our continued information and activities over the summer break. As you know, the last few weeks have been a busy time for every parent and also for the volunteers in the National Parent Forum of Scotland. We've been trying to keep parents up to date and informed with challenging situations as they have arisen. You may want to watch your Q&A session with the Deputy First Minister, John, John Swinney, uh, which, was, which is also on our YouTube channel. If you're on Twitter, please use our hashtag NPFSMaths. And if you can join, please take some photographs of your children and join today's session. We'd love to see them. Now, just to remind you of housekeeping for today, everyone will have their, their mics and their cameras turned off or muted. Uh, so you'll only see Chris McKenna after I, after I do this introduction. If you have a question, please use the chat function. Uh, it's not possible, if it's not possible to answer all your questions during the session, we will get back to you. We have a team, the excellent team from the National Parent Forum and also from the Numeracy and Maths team at Education Scotland on hand to answer your questions as they come up. And you'll also uh, see Chris stop the session uh, at various points to take any questions that you have as well. So please fire in the questions as well and questions from you or questions from your children. And um, lastly, I'd just like to say that uh, as you do use the chat function to do the questions, please remember, that we have uh, hundreds on this morning. We have parents and we have children and young people too. So please be careful about what you write. And as I said, uh, your questions will be answered straight away. Lastly, you'll receive a survey at the end of this event and I hope you'll be able to fill it in. Uh, uh, it's really helpful to us in terms of gauging your, your, your feedback for these sessions to try and help us do more. Uh, but more than that, if you've, if, uh, if you've already been to the previous uh, four sessions, this is session number five, then and have completed the survey please uh, think about completing the survey again the more feedback we have uh, the more we can we can help mold and shape the kind of supports that we as a parent organization are trying to do for you and for your children so i hope you enjoy today's session uh, as i said that this today is on decimal fractions percentages tomorrow and then we begin to move up uh, the primary school uh, later on so with that i will hand over to chris thank you Hello everyone, Austin and I are back again to do the next inset on decimals or decimal fractions. So I hope you all have a pen and paper handy. Uh, any questions that you have, you can put into the chat function of this webinar and we will do our best to answer them. So let's get started. So again, I'll use a PowerPoint and uh, share the screen with you. Uh, that's the easiest way. Here we go, where is it? Right, so we're doing decimals today. Let me just find the slideshow button. Okay, so coming together for session five, decimals, use the hashtag NPFSMaths if you're on Twitter, get this trending, put photos out of your work, put photos out of you and your children sitting working together, and even screenshot the picture so that me and Austin can get on as well. Is that right, Austin? Yeah. Right, okay, so what we're going to look at today, what is a decimal? We're going to look at place value, understanding decimals, decimals linked to fractions, and ordering decimals. So what is a decimal? Well, decimals are numbers that exist between whole numbers. So you've got all your whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but in between those numbers, we have what we call well, fractions or decimal fractions that lie in here and here. And these have a specific number. We can have decimals between two and three, or we could have decimals between 12 and 13, or 13 and 14. 
So there's my whole numbers, 12, 13, 14. But in between 12 and 13, there are decimal numbers. And in between 13 and 14, there are decimal numbers. First of all, I want you to shout out or type in the chat box how many coloured blocks are there. Nice and easy to start off. How many coloured blocks are there there are Austin? Two. Two. Nice and easy. Oh, first I should have said my wife is back at work today, so Austin and I are in the house with Scarlett ourselves. Scarlett is uh, doing her own task, but she's seven years old. She may burst in at any moment, and if she bursts in, we need to uh, listen to her demands, because she is the boss in this house. <laughs> so yes, you're right, Austin, there are two yellow coloured blocks. Okay, ready for the next one? Here we go, guys. How many coloured blocks are there now? So shout out the answer at home. Shout to the screen. Type in the chat box how many colour blocks are there. Nice and easy, Austin tells the answer. Four. Four. Good. Okay. Ready for the next one? How many colour blocks are there now? Shout out. Type in the answer into the screen. Answer is, Austin? Three. Three. Nice and easy. So these are full whole numbers. Next one. Now, how many colour blocks are there now? So don't shout out just yet, Austin. Let everybody get a chance. To do it at home, how many colour blocks are there on the screen now? Right, this one's a wee bit tricky, Austin. Do you know the answer, Austin? There's two and a half. There's two and a half. So we looked at fractions the last time. We have here, we have two and a half colour blocks. Now we're going to learn about decimals later. I just want to kind of link back to the fractions that we did on Tuesday. Now, how many colour blocks are there now? Let's think about this one. Okay, so look at that screen. How many colour blocks are there now? Hmm, not as many answers coming in, in the chat now, because this one's a bit tricky, isn't it? Is there two, Austin? Is there two colour blocks? There's two whole colour blocks. Okay, is there three whole colour blocks? No. No, we're short of it. Any ideas what that would be, Austin? Um, uh, I have a guess. Third. A third, do you think it's a third? don't think it's a third, I don't think it's quite big enough to be a third. <laughs> well, let's see, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something to help you out. So what I did this time was I showed you exactly, I cut the, the last block up into equal fraction sizes. So what fraction is that we have in this wee bit here, Austin? Um, Five. What fraction's coloured in here? Oh, um, one. Out of how many? Um, ten. Good, so what fraction's that? That's a? Um, whole, oh, uh, uh, one or uh, one tenth. Good, one tenth. So we have one tenth shaded here. We've got one block plus one block, which is two blocks. So what we have is we have two and one tenth, don't we? And again, we want to have a decimal number for that, but that is the fraction, or that's how many coloured blocks are so what's that looking at decimal fractions in what tell me what fraction is shaded here first of all that's a nice easy one a fraction is shaded here awesome um, uh, um a half. good a half well done so we have a half but what is that as a decimal fraction do you know what that is as a decimal Austin? um yeah what is that? 0 0.5 good so a half has got a decimal fraction and it's 0 0.5. And you th if you think of money, if you think of a pound and you split a pound between two people, how much do you get? 50. 50 pence or in money terms, it's zero pounds 50. So here, if we've got a half as a fraction, but the decimal fraction is 0 0.5. And I want you to try and uh, learn that. So a half is equal to 0 0.5, okay? And I also want to point out here, that here is the number line from 0 to 10. Now, where does 0 0.5 go on the number line, or where does a half go on the number line? Well, it goes exactly in the middle between 0 and 1. That there is 0 0.5 or a half. I also want to point out a half. If I split this up into tenths, then I can see what is a half equivalent to in terms of tenths. So look at that. So a half is shaded, or 0 0.5 is shaded. But what, how many tenths are shaded, Austin? Can you tell me that one? Five. So what, five tenths is also equal to 0 0.5. So we've got a half, 
equals 5 tenths, and a decimal fraction is 0 0.5. So we can refer to 0 0.5 as a half or 5 tenths. They're all equivalent. We talked about equivalent fractions on Tuesday. Where would a half go or 0 0.5 go on the number line between 0 and 1? So here we're looking at the number line from 0 to 10, and 0 0.5 goes there. But if we were to focus in or zoom in between 0 and 1, we can see that a half or 0 0.5 goes exactly in the middle, right there. Any questions? Please send them into the chat box. All the key questions that come through will be sent to my phone and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, how many coloured blocks are there now? So I want you to shout out this at home or type in what you think the decimal answer is here. What do you think the answer is, Austin? One and a half. One and a half, which is one point. Who knows what that is at home? Shout out to the screen. Shout it out. One point. Five. Good, so one and a half. So the decimal fraction is we have 1.5 or one and a half or one and five tenths. Good, who got that? Good, well done. Where does 1.5 go then on this number line? So I want you to point at the screen where you think 1.5 or one and a half would go on this number line. Oh, so you point to where you think it would go, and I'll tell everybody if you got it right or not. Where do you think one? Well, I don't know because I can't see what numbers are. Does it matter what numbers are either? Because um, one point five. No, because this is zero and ten. Yeah. So 1.5 would go in between 1 and 2. So that is where 1.5 goes this time. Do we, do we get this at home? Any questions you need to ask, please ask them for me. Hey, ask them in the chat box. So there is 1.5, then it's exactly between 1 and 2 in the middle. The decimal point, what is the purpose of the decimal point? Well, the decimal point separates the whole number part from the fractional part. So we have 1.5. So we have one point, and that short tells me now that I'm going to fractions or the decimal fraction part. How many color blocks are there now? How many colored blocks are there now? So you can tell me that as a fraction or a decimal fraction. Austin, can you shout out how many color blocks are there? Six and a half. Six and a half. Now, can you tell me what the decimal fraction is here? So you can type into the chat box, everyone. You can shout out at home. The answer is 6.5. Five. Good, okay. Now, where does 6.5 go on this number line between? So we've got 0 here, and we've got 10 here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where does 6.5 or 6.5 go? Austin, awesome. can you point to the screen? Tell me where 6.5 goes. Oh, yes, good. Well done. I didn't think of that. Good. That's where 6.5 goes. Austin's just using the cursor here to say, right, it goes there. And he is correct. Good. So 6.5, exactly in the middle between 6 and 7. Right. Now we have one whole block again. It's empty, isn't it? There's no colours in there at the moment. How much have I shaded this time? So what do you think? How What fraction is that that I have shaded? Do you know at home? It's hard, isn't it? Do you know? What do you think it looks like? One-tenth. It looks like one-tenth, isn't it? We don't know that exactly. But if I do this, then yes, I have split it up into 10 equal parts. And I could see, yeah, that part there that I shaded it is one part out of 10, isn't it? So it's one tenth. And do you know the equivalent fraction or decimal fraction for one tenth, Austin? Um, it's two twentieths one. Two twentieths is the same as one tenth, yeah, but do you know the decimal fraction for oh, one tenth? Mm -hmm. Zero point something. Zero. One. Well done, Austin. Good. So again, if you think of money, if you had one pound and you were to split one pound into ten parts, or split one, divide, sorry, I'll start again. 
they split a pound between 10 people, each person would get 10 pence or zero pounds 10. So one tenth is equal to 0 0.1. Well done, Austin. I want to investigate this just a wee bit further. So here is just the place value chart. You can see here I have one block, but uh, we don't have the whole of it shaded. So here we put a zero in here, but we have one tenth shaded. So I put in one in the tenth place value column. Now let's look at this a wee bit further. So we have one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split the number line. Oops, sorry, I'll start again. So I've split the number one into 10 parts. I'm going to draw the number line between zero and one, and I'm going to cut that up into 10 parts as well. So here is the number zero. Here is the whole number one. And what we're going to do is we're going to investigate the numbers between zero and one. So I have shaded one part out of 10. Yes. And we just told, we also just told us that that is equal to 0 0.1. So I want to put a 0 0.1 in this yellow box. And I put 0 0.1 here. Next one. I have now shaded two tenths, which is equal to 0 0.2. So I'm going to put 0 0.2 there, and I'm going to put 0 0.2 here on the number line. I'm now going to shade in three tenths which is equal to 0 0.3. Um, yeah, 3, 0 0.3. And again, I'm going to put 0 0.3 here and 0 0.3 on the number line. Then we'll have shade 4 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.4. Four. So I'm going to put four ten, uh, 0 0.4 in here and 0 0.4 on the number line. And then I've shaded 5 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.5. Five. So I'm going to put 0 0.5 in here. I'm going to put 0 0.5 in there. What is 5 tenths again? What is that also equal to? Um, one half. Good. So again, we can see here's 0, here's 1, and this is ha ha in the middle. So that's a half or 0 0.5 was exactly in the middle. Let's shade in 6 tenths. So now I've got 6 tenths, which equals 0 0.6. I'm going to put 0 0.6 in here. I'm going to put 0 0.6 there on the number line. We're going to shade in 7 tenths, so I've got 7 tenths equals 0 0.7. I'm going to put 0 0.7 in here, and I'm going to put 0 0.7 down here. I'm now going to shade 8 tenths. 8 tenths equals 0 0.8. And what goes in here? Um, 0 0.8. 0 0.8. 9 tenths equals 0 0.8. 9 tenths, <coughs> so we're going to write 9 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.9. 9. I'm going to put 0 0.9 in here and 0 0.9 down here on the number line. And finally, I'm going to shade all 10 tenths. Now, 10 tenths equals one, exactly, one, one hole, good, one hole, or 1.0. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I could call it 1.0. As you can see here, I can call it 1.0, or I can call it 1. It doesn't matter. Uh, so as you can see here now, look at the decimal numbers. One, uh, the, the tenths place value column here. So one two, three, four. See, we're going up just like we normally would. Uh, if you look back to the very, very first session we did, we wrote the numbers one to 10 in the 10 frames. This follows that pattern. Now, I'm just going to stop just to make sure I don't have any questions coming through. Doesn't look like it, so that's fine. Good, right. So any questions to ask me, please put them into the chat box and I can answer them. Obviously, there's a team of people behind the scenes uh, back and back answers to questions uh, and they will follow me ones that are relevant for me to answer. So I hope, I hope we're doing our best to answer all your questions that come through. Uh, please ask us again if, if, you, if the answer isn't quite to, uh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't satisfy what you're looking for. Right, where are we now? So I have one whole block. How much have I shaded, Austin? Four tenths. Four tenths. We've shaded four tenths. Do you know what that is as a decimal? Let's, now let's flick back to the previous screen. So here is all my decimal numbers here. So 1 tenth is 0 0.1, 2 tenth is 0 0.2, 3 tenth is 0 0.3, 4 tenth is 0 0.4, 5 tenth is 0 0.5, and so on. So if I shade four tenths, what is my decimal equivalent or my decimal fraction for four tenths? Do you know, Austin? Uh-huh. What is that? 
0.4. Good, well done. So here we have 4 tenths. What fraction is shaded? It's 4 tenths, so it's 0 0.4. How many ones do we have? Well, we don't have any ones. So we put 0 in that column, but we've got 4 tenths, so we put 4 into the tenths column. So I've got 0 0.4. Let's go for the next one. So what fraction, I'll let everybody get a chance to answer this one, what fraction is shaded? So let's go for the fraction. What fraction is shaded? How many parts are shaded and how many parts are there in total? Do you know the answer, Austin? Uh -huh. What is it? 0.9. Good. So what's the fraction before that then? 9 tenths. Good. 9 tenths which Austin is right, is 0 0.9. So what decimal fraction of this block is shaded? It's 9 tenths, which is equal to 0 0.9. Good, let's try another one. Quickly, just going to check the phone again. Okay, no questions coming through at the moment. <coughs> so, what fraction is shaded now? So let's look at this question. So again, this is one whole block. This is another whole block. What fraction is shaded? Do you think you know us? Um, what fraction is shaded? Um, yeah, I think I know. I think you know. Okay, tell us. One in six, ten. Good, we've got one whole block that's shaded. And then out the second block, it's six out of the ten parts, isn't it? So it's one whole block and six tenths. So I'm going to write that down here, which is one and six tenths, which is one whole. And we've got six tenths, so it's 1.6. Again, the decimal point, that's acting as the, the place value to separate the whole number from the fractional parts. So one and six tenths, which is 1.6. Who got that at home? Did you all get that? Good. Right, let's keep going here. Obviously, this PowerPoint will be saved onto the website. The, the video will be put onto the National Parent Forum YouTube page. So the more you watch this, uh, the more you'll understand. You may have to watch this one a few times because decimals can be a wee bit tricky, but hopefully with these visual clues and these visual the aids, that, that will help you get the understanding. Okay, how many coloured blocks are there? So I want you to think about that at home. How many coloured blocks are there? So, Austin, I don't want you to tell me the decimal part. I want you to tell me the fraction part. What do you think? Um, one whole. And what's the other bit? Four, um, four tenths. Good, so we've got one and four tenths, yes. Now I want you to link that to the decimal fraction. So that's going to be one point shout out at home one point type into the chat box one point austin four good so we've got one and four tens which is equal to 1.4 good let's try the next one then we ready to go austin oh sorry i forgot this so where would 1.4 go on this number line here so here we have zero here we have ten We've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Where do you think 1.4 would go, Austin? So you just kind of use the cursor to show me where you think 1.4 would go. About there. About there, yeah, I would say so as well. Just slightly below 1.5, isn't it? So yeah, 1.4, I think, would go right about there. Well done, good. Let's try the next question. So... I want you at home to tell me how many coloured blocks are there. So Austin will tell us the answer in a minute. So how many coloured blocks are there? Shout out at home. Write it down in your bit of paper. Type it into the chat box. Austin, tell me the fraction part, so don't go for the decimal fraction, just tell me the fractional part. Two holes. Two holes and? Seven tenths. Good, so we've got two and seven tenths. So hopefully you all got that, which is equal to two point. Shout it out at home right in there. Type in the answer, two point. Seven. Good, two point seven. Brilliant. And where would two point seven go on the number line? Also, you want to take control and show me where you think this would go. 
Right there. What do you guys think at home? Let's let, let that go down. Do you think Austin's right? Do you think two, that's about 2.7 is roughly in there? Yep, because again, it's going to be over halfway, so there's about 2.5 or 2.5. So yeah, I think roughly about there is right. Good, well done, Austin. Right, how many coloured blocks are there now? So shout out the answer at home. Type in to the chat box. Austin tells us the fractional part. Nine and eight tenths. Nine. <coughs> Excuse me. Nine and eight tenths. Hopefully you all had that in your head or wrote it down on a bit of paper. And the decimal? 9.8. 9.8. Nine well done. Good. Right, hopefully we're all getting this okay at home. If there any questions, I'm just going to stop. Give us a breather. No questions coming through, so please ask us some questions. We, we, we like questions. We like talking to the people sitting at home. So if you have questions, please direct them to us uh, and we'll, we'll discuss it on here. Finally, where does 9.8 go on the number line? So I want you all to point at your own screen. Where do you think 9.8 would go? So you can point to your own screen, whatever you're watching it on, where do you think 9.8 would go? I think it would go roughly about here. Let's see if I bring the arrow in. Yeah, roughly about there. Good, right, let's try the next question. So, oh, sorry, yeah, before we forget, all slides and resources can be found at this website here, my website, counteronus.org.uk forward slash learning hyphen together. If you click this button here, tasks, there will be tasks for you to complete just like the ones we've been doing. The slideshow will be here and the link to YouTube when it's ready it will be here. Okay, so now we have one whole block again. Okay. So we have one whole block again. I could chop it into tenths in different ways. So you see here, I have chopped it into tenths. You can count that just to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have one whole block, and I've broken it or I've shaded this that amount. What decimal fraction is that? So tell me, Austin. What is the decimal fraction that's shaded here? Remember, we started with one whole block. What decimal fraction is shaded? 0.3. Good, the decimal fraction is 0.3. Now, as we see here, this is the number zero, and this is the number one. And here we have all my one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and 10 tenths, which is number one, or one whole. But there are more decimal numbers between zero and 0 0.1, and between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, and between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, and even between 0 0.9 and 1. There are decimal fractions exist everywhere, or more decimal numbers exist in between our tenths, or in between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, and so on. So that's what we're going to look at now, so, now nobody shout out just now, I want you to think about this, so I want you to look at this here, what does the shaded section represent here? <coughs> Excuse me, so what does the shaded section represent here? I'm just checking my phone to see if any questions. Do you know, Austin? It's tricky, isn't it? Because the reason it's tricky is because we don't know what size this is until all the parts are exactly the same size. So what I've done here is I've chopped this tenth up into, well, I've taken a, a section of that shade. So I need to make all the parts equal or the same size. Mm -hmm. So watch this now. The big grid. The big grid, Austin, well spotted, it's the big grid. Now, what fraction of the big grid do we have? Um, one over 100. So we have one one hundredth of the big grid. Good. 
Now, if you think of money again, and if I had one pound, so that if say this big grid represented one pound, much would that represent? If this whole thing represented one pound, what would that represent? One penny. One penny. Now, if you think of one penny, that's zero pounds, zero one. So here, this is one one hundredth of the big grid or the big block that we started with. So it's one part out of 100 or one one hundredth, which equals 0 0.01. Say that, Austin. 0 0.01. 0 0.01. And here we introduce now we have our ones, but we don't have, we have we've got zero ones here. We've now got zero tenths, but we've now got one part out of 100. So now we've introduced this extra place value column, which is called the hundredths. So when you're splitting one unit or one block, into 100 parts, and that is the decimal number. So it's a 0 0.01 we have here. So 1 100 equals 0 0.01, zero ones, zero tenths, but there is one 100th. So hopefully that will become clearer as we progress through here. So look at that fraction there. How many parts are shaded? How many parts or how many blocks are all together. So how many parts are shaded, Austin? Um, three. Out of? 100. So we've got three out of 100, which equals, if each part is 0 0.01, we can think of one again, one pence, two pence, three pence. So that's 0 0.03. So this time we've got zero tens, zero ones, zero tenths, and three one hundredths. So three one hundredths equals 0 0.03. Okay, let's like stay with us here. We're, we're really pushing on and challenge our decimal knowledge here. So next question. What fraction is shaded now? So what fraction is shaded now? So we can see it's eight parts out of 100, or eight 100s, and if each part is 0 0.01, that's 0 0.01, 0 0.02, all the way up to 0 0.08. Hopefully, we're following this at home. Again, any questions, I'll just check just now. Please pop them into the chat box. Right, let's try another one. So again, 8 one hundredths equals 0 0.08. I've got 0 ones, we've got 0 tenths, we've got 8 one hundredths. How, what fraction? Is shaded now. <clears throat> so it's a wee bit tricky. So we have, you might spot this, Well, that's 10 one hundredths. So that's 0 0.10. But you might also say, well, actually, that's what, what we're looking at earlier on. That's one row out of the 10. So that's one tenth, which is 0 0.1. And the thing is, these two are identical. They're equivalent. We'll talk more about this zero here later on. Basically, 0 0.10 is exactly the same as 0 0.1. And I'll show you that <clears throat> here. So 1 tenth equals, oops, let me, that's a wee mistake there. Let me just fix that. So 10 one hundredths equals 0 0.10, or 1 tenth equals 0 0.1. So one tenth equals ten one hundredths, which equals zero point one, which equals zero point one zero. So all of these things are absolutely equivalent and identical. We can see from the place value chart we have zero ones. Now we've got one tenth, and we've got zero one hundredths because we're thinking as it's ten one hundredths, so we're thinking it as one tenth and zero hundredths, or ten one hundredths. Hope that makes sense. We'll do more examples, and it will come to you. Yeah, hopefully, but more, the more examples we do, the more our brain will start to understand it and start to link into our kind of memory and our, our knowledge. So here is how we can count up. I mean, again, we could imagine it as counting up in one pence, two pence, three pence, four pence, five pence, so on, or 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, and 0 0.1, or we can have it as 0 0.10. These two are identical. So we need to really get it into our head that 0 0.10 is the same as 0 0.1.
I could continue on, so I could count all the way up. So 0 0.09, which is 0 0.1, then 0 0.11, 0 0.12. But to make it make sense, it's a good idea to have all the numbers with the same number of decimal places so that we can see here 0 0.19, there is two numbers after the decimal point. So to make it the same or make it easier to compare, we like to have the same number of decimal places after each number. So that's why we put an extra zero here as well. We can think of it just going up as 18, 19, 20 and so on. Okay, let's look at the next question. So what fraction is shaded? So let's look at this one, Austin. What fraction is shaded? How many boxes are shaded, Austin, do you think? Um, 23. Out of? 100. So we've got 23 100s, which is equal to 0 0.23. That makes sense? Here we have two tenths and we have three hundredths. Or we have the 23 hundredths, but we understand that 10 tenths, sorry, 10 one hundredths is one tenth. So we can see here we've got two full tenths, so that's why the two goes in here, and we've got the three extra hundredths. You can think of that as two tenths and three one hundredths. And if I add 0 0.2 and 0 0.03, now, this is what we talked about earlier on. These two numbers don't, this has two numbers after the decimal point. This only has one number after the decimal point. So to make things easier with decimals, we talk about padding out with a zero. Padding out with a zero just means we add a zero on at the end of the number so that it's got the same number of decimal places as the other numbers. So here we had 0 0.2, that's got one decimal place. This has got two numbers after the decimal point. So I pad that out with a zero by adding that in there, and it makes the addition just that wee bit easier. So we're going to call this padding out with a zero. What are we going to call that, Austin? Padding out with a zero. Padding out with a zero, just so that the numbers are easier to compare. So again here, we have two tenths and three one hundredths, which is your 23 one hundredths that we talked about. Okay, look at this decimal fraction. What do we have here? How many one hundredths are shaded, Austin? Um, for, um, 45 one hundredths. It's 45 one hundredths, which is 0 0.45. 0 0.45, good. But we can also see that as, so you see what I'm doing here? I'm highlighting the tenths now. Mm -hmm. You could see that, well, that's like four tenths and an extra five one hundredths, so it's 0 0.45. Now, I hope this is making sense, uh, that 45 one hundredths is the same as 0 0.45 or the same as 4 tenths and 5 one hundredths. I'm just going to stop, check the phone. No questions coming through, that's good. Okay, what do we have now? 98, 98 one hundredths. So we have 98 one hundredths. Do you know what that is as a decimal? Type it into the chat box if you know what that is as a decimal, please. So type that into the chat box if you know what that is as a decimal. Do you know what it is as a decimal, Austin? What is it? 0 0.98. 0 0.98, let's see. So again, I've highlighted it slightly different. You can look at it as 98 one hundredths, but you can also look at it as 9 tenths and 8 one hundredths. So it's 0 0.98, well done, you were right. We're almost at a whole number. Right, so for the rest of the focus, what we're going to say is this big red block, that's equal to one whole. What? What am I going to do? That red red block's equal to one whole. Yep. The yellow line's equal to one tenth, and the green dot's equal to one one hundredth. That's not a dot. <laughs> right, so yep, you're right. So the yellow block is equal to as one tenth, which is equal to zero point. Um, one. And the green square is um, one one hundredth, which is equal to 
Um, 0 0.01. Good, 0 0.01. So that's what we're going to use moving forward, okay? So the red square is one whole uh, number. The yellow uh, kind of skinny block is 1 tenth or 0 0.1. And the green square is 1 100, which is 0 0.01. So the question is, what number is represented here? So what number does this represent? So quickly just flick back. The red block is one, the yellow block is one tenth, the green square is one one hundredth. So what number is represented here? Type the answer into the chat box. Shout it at your screen. The answer is, well, we're going to look at our ones, our tenths, our hundredths. I have one red block, so one goes in there. I have three tenths, so three goes in here, and I have four one hundredths, so four goes in here. So the answer is 1.34. Who got that right? Did you get it right? Did you have it in your head? Good. Who got that right at home? Good, well done. Okay, let's look at the next question. Okay. So what do we have here? What number is represented here? How many ones are there? How many tenths are there? How many hundreds are there? What number is represented? Tell me, shout it out at home. <clears throat> Austin, tell us. Um, one whole, so um, one whole, um, four tenths and eight hundred. Say the decimal number out for me. One point four eight. Good, well done, Austin. Let's try the next one. So we're almost out of time here. Yeah? So we'll get time to fit in a few more questions, so just squeeze up closer to me, pal. Uh, right, so what number do we have this time then? So don't shout out, give it a chance at home. You can type it into the chat box, everyone. Let me see. Okay, Austin, I think we've given everybody enough time to look at that and get the answer. What do you think it is, Austin? 1.6. Um, eight or nine, nine. Nine, okay, let's see. Yes, 1.69, good. We've got one whole, six tenths, nine one hundredths, so it's 1.69. Next question. So look at that, everyone. Shout it out. Type into the chat box. What do you think the answer is? Is there some great answers coming through? Are we happy? Are we understanding this? Yeah. Good. Right, shout out the answer then, Ost. 2.31. Um, Brilliant. Well done. 2.31. Good. Let's go again. We'll look at this one, everyone. What do we think? Type an answer into the chat box. Shout it out at home. What decimal number is this? Tell us often. 3.14. 2.14. Yes, he is correct. Well done. Let's go again. Right, this one here. Look at the screen, everyone. What do we think? Do you have an answer? Is there answers flying into this chat box? Shout out, Austin. 5.34. Boom, well done. 5.34. Who got that right at home? Me. And else? <laughs> Good. Right, this one here, Austin. What do we have? Oh, don't, don't get over the chance to think about this one. So, what do we have? What numbers do you think this is, Austin? Um, 1. 1. Uh, sorry, you can't quite see that, can you? Because of the whoops. So that's two point six three. Sorry, there's a wee top bar on our screen. We can't quite see them. So it's two point six three. That one. Now let's look at the next bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm, put, I'm going to put another number here. So we've got two point six three here. What number do I have here? So type in what we have here. So this top one's two point six three. What number is this here, Austin? One point two. Two. Good, 1.22. Now we can start to see we can do a wee bit of addition. Because if I've got 2.63 here and I've got 1.22 here, mm -hmm. what do I have in total? Don't shout out, just everybody think about that. What do we have in total? Do you know? 
what is the total number here? So we can see we're applying place value, we're adding our ones to our ones, our tens to our tens, and our hundreds to our hundreds. Do you know what the answer is, Austin? Yeah, I do. What is it? 3.85. Well done, Austin. Good. Hopefully some people at home got that right. Good, 3.85. Now we've got two questions left to do, which is just ordering decimals. So this won't take as long at all, and then we'll get stopped for some questions. So put these order put these decimals in an order of size smallest to biggest. Now, as you can see, there is two numbers after the decimal point here. There is one number after the decimal point here, two here, two here, and one there. So when ordering decimals, it's helpful to have all the decimals with the same number of decimal places. Pad with zeros to help. So we did this earlier on, so I'm going to put a zero here and here. I'm going to pad these out with zeros just to make them easier to compare. So now, what do you think the smallest number is, Austin? 0.03. Good. What's next? 0 0.17. 0 0.17. Good. 0 0.33. You think so? Huh? Oh, no, I don't. What do you think? 0 0.20. Good. Zero point three zero. Good. And finally, the last one, zero point three three. So when we're ordering decimals, it's good to pad them out with zeros. I'm just going to show you one more example here. This time we have three numbers after this decimal point. Mm -hmm. So we need to pad this out with a zero, that out with a zero, that out with a zero, and this needs to be padded out with two zeros. So they've all got the same thing. The same number of decimal places. So I just pad, you can see I've put the zeros in and red just to show you the difference. And now the smallest number here is 0 0.007. Now this is an extension task. I just wanted to show you this just so that you understand that it's the same strategies no matter uh, what, the, what the answers go to. Yep, yeah, most is right, 007. That is the smallest, 0 0.007, 007, James Bond. Then it's 0 0.70. Then it's 0 0.170, 0 0.700, and 0 0.790. So sorry, that last example just a wee bit rushed, but you can uh, look back in these slides again, or look back in the YouTube link, which I think this brings us nicely to a conclusion. Oh, I was going to look at uh, adding decimals. Oh. You can look at this one yourself, but if you're doing 0 0.9 plus 0 0.6, you can move one of the tenths over, just like we did when we were doing 9 plus 6 in session 2 when we were doing addition, which basically gets me a whole block and 0.5, so the answer would be 1.5. So that's something you can you can extend on to. I'm going to skip by this example, we don't have time for it. So slides and resources can be found here the normal website. Hopefully if you've enjoyed today, you can put me pictures on, on Twitter, using the hashtag NPFSMaths. With the links on YouTube, you can follow, count on us on Twitter and Facebook. And thank you very much for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed that session on decimals. Decimals can be a wee bit tricky. It's not a natural way of thinking, decimal numbers. Uh, so, but can you please complete this survey? So, Get your phone out and put the camera onto that QR code and it will take you directly to the survey. Flex. Or you can uh, type that into the your uh, address bar. So please fill out this survey. We really, really uh, take this survey very seriously. We, we really kind of digest them and look at what the feedback is because uh, we really determined to provide a really good quality of, kind of tutorials in partnership with the National Parent Forum Scotland and Education Scotland. So we really, really appreciate it if you take the time to complete this subject. And if you've got any questions to ask me, we will be staying on for as long as 10 minutes or so, if you want to, 15 minutes, if, if you want to ask any more questions. Uh, if you want to know how to do any particular question, then you can ask us to do it. So there is the QR code. Take that into your address bar 
and please fill out the survey. Right, I'm going to see what the chat is. Claire Holland, your teaching makes it so straightforward. Thank you very much, Claire. That's very nice. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Lucy Harkins, brilliant. I'm glad you loved the explanations. Caitlin C, you're welcome. I hope come August the same topics are taught on the same weeks across schools to so coincide with your lessons. Well, that, that'll be a tough challenge, eh, Donna. You're welcome, Mandy. Any other maths questions coming in? Thanks very much for eh, the, the, the thanks coming in. Thank you, Chris and Austin. You're welcome, Carol Sned. Is this the end? No, I think we've got a session tomorrow on percentages. Coloured visuals are very useful, yeah. You're welcome, Grace. It's like being at school. You have loved it. Brilliant. Multiplication of decimals. If you had time for one example, my son is starting this. Yes, I'll go over that in a minute, Laura. Okay, okay. So, can you just give me a type in, Laura, exactly what type of question he's talking about just now? Uh, I mean, I'm thinking of a couple of examples that I can go over, Laura, but if you type in uh, exactly what he's talking about, then I can do that particular example, Laura. Okay, Laura, I will try that. Right, okay, so I'm just seeing other questions. Because Thank you very much, I enjoyed it. You're welcome. Uh, don't know who that is, Tracy, I think. I don't know, kind of disappeared. I like doing this, it's actually easy to understand. You're welcome, Sean. Right, so let's try that question. Yep, okay, Laura, we'll give that a go. Let me just share this screen with you. Oh, wrong way. So, so Laura's asking a question about 1.25 times 5. Let me show you here, Laura. So, what I would start with, Laura, let me just go back. So, say sort of, even something simple, Laura, oh, that's too thick a pen, let me uh, choose a thinner pen. So, say something like, something basic, Laura, like, well, that's even too thick, go like that. Something like 0 0.2, right? Oh, that's 0 0.2. Times for as you say, times three. So here we have the. This is quite difficult to use this. Uh, I'll use the mouse, I think, uh, to draw zero point two. So why don't you just fix this thing right here, Laura? Sorry, everything's in my road. Right. So zero point two. So what is zero point two? Well, zero point two is. that there. So 0 0.2 times 3 just means I would have three of these all together. Oh my goodness, that's not very good. You get the picture, Laura? So 0 0.2 just mean, times 3 just means we've got three of these. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Hopefully we can see that as 0 0.6. If I was doing what your question earlier on was, was it 1.25? So... If I go to here, 1.25, 1.25 times 6, or was it F times 5 or something? Well, there's different ways you can do it. So I would say, right, there is 1.25, that's a quarter. And there's 1.25 again. So what I'm doing is drawing 5 1.25s. And there's another one. So you can see that's 1.25 there. That's my whole, that's all one, 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 one. And that's my quarter of a 0.25. So you can see here, one plus one plus one plus one plus one is five. 
And then what I could do actually, I could put these together. Oops. So instead of having that 0.25 there, so I'm just going to rub that out, rub that out, and rub that out, and put them over here beside. So that was three rubbed out. So that would make me one more. That's one hole. And then I've just got my 0.5, so it's plus a one, plus my 0.25. So that's the kind of visual way to look at it, to try and help understand it. I know that's not a great uh, drawing there, but uh, it's maybe something we can look at in the next session. Hope that helped, Laura. I, it was, I'm using this thing here to draw on, but it's actually quite difficult to draw accurately. Would you use Dean's when teaching this for decimals or the complete? Is it okay or does it confuse children? No, I don't. I think that's fine, Patricia. Uh, I always uh, like to just start with things that are kind of like the, the unit fraction, so it's all exactly the same size. So you're kind of tens and ones, whatever. Yeah, but I think Dean's are, are, are a good extension to bring in. Good, Laura, that's good. I'm glad it helped. Uh, I think it's just important to try and visualise the same way you've been doing it. So what is 1.25? Uh, it's one and a quarter, so you've got five of those. So link it to link the decimal. I think it's easy to link the decimal to the fraction. Right, guys, any more questions coming through? Uh, when would you move on to setting the decimal multiplications of chimney sum? That's a, a that's a question that I'm not sure of the answer to, Donna. Uh, I always like to try and think of maths in a more mental strategy. So I would always, to any question, I would be trying to think of a strategy that I can do in my head. So, for instance, see, I go back to Donna Wallace. Uh, even something like Donna Wallace, if I was doing something like 1.2 times 3, I would be thinking of it as 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. So I would think add my units, uh, add my ones, sorry, and add my tenths. So it's something like that. So I'm always trying to think of a, a way I can do it mentally or a strategy that I already know. So say it was even something like... 1.25 times 3, again, I would think of it as 1.25 plus 1.25 plus 1.25, and I get a 3.75. So I'm not one for, did I actually do that? I didn't even share my screen there. Sorry, I'm realising I'm uh, doodling away in this and didn't even share my screen. Uh, so I was always trying to think of it as kind of a, a strategy up here I can deal with. Do you always draw boxes? I think draw boxes are a nice wee way to visualise what's happening, Donna. Does the Act Inspire come on the tablet you have? No, that's just a... Uh, I've just downloaded a copy of Active Inspire, Lucy. Uh, I think you can get a free version of it. I used it when I was teaching. So yeah, there's an answer there for Maria Doherty in Education Scotland. Formal calculations can be introduced when children have a good understanding of place value and they can explain what they're doing. Sometimes the, the kind of chimney sums are, are introduced too early. This is my opinion, introduced too early. And children then go to it as a strategy uh, when they don't really understand what's happening. So I'm all for kind of trying to get a strategy that's developed on understanding. Right, guys, another 30 seconds or a minute or so, see if any more questions come through. And uh, thank you for tuning in again. So any more questions, just pop them in here before we go. That's what I was talking about earlier. I was doing all these doodles earlier on and I thought I was sharing the screen, was it? So 1.2 times 3 is 1.2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2 which is 3.6. 1.25 times 3 is 1.25 plus 1.25 plus 1.25, which is 3.75. I thought I was sharing the screen earlier on when I was explaining that, but I wasn't. Right, thank you, everyone. We will leave at this point. See you later, Austin. See you later. Tune in tomorrow, percentages.
Hope you hope you have that 